Hi again, and welcome back for your Dr. Fauci inspired gain of function exercise for the week. This week, we're going to restore support to the shoulder and motor control to the shoulder blade. While we're at it, we're going to get a bit of extension in the upper back as well. So what we're looking at here is better mobility and control of the scapula, also known as the shoulder blade. The scapula has direct attachments to both the rib cage and the spine, as well as the neck and the head. So loss of support and control here can affect the entire region. It can cause compensation in several areas and lead to all kinds of problems. So here's your scapular control exercise for better shoulder support and health. Begin by laying on your stomach while resting on your forearms in an overhead position. Notice that I have my elbows in line with the tops of my ears. My hands are placed on the floor above my head. Pressing through your hands and forearms and your elbows, begin to press your body up and away from the floor. Inhale as you press upward, feeling your belly gently press into the floor as you fill your lungs. Your chest should rise and your belly should stay in contact with the floor. Your hips should not move at all. Your upper back should extend. Keep your gaze low as you push away and do not look up as you rise. Bring some awareness to your shoulder blades as the shoulders come forward and the shoulder blades sweep around the side of your ribcage. Scapular control, that is the movement of the shoulder blades back and forth around the ribcage is what we want to focus on and develop. Now begin to exhale and sink your upper body back toward the floor. And once you return all the way to the floor, gently squeeze the shoulder blades together and let the shoulder blades relax and kind of sink in as much as possible. As you repeat this push-up cycle, do not strain or hold your breath. This is not a strengthening exercise, but a motor control exercise. Make sure the movement is pain-free. Let your breath be your guide. Think yoga, not weightlifting. Using your breath to begin and end each movement will help further integrate support of the muscles and release tension. Inhale and press the chest away. Exhale as you sink back to the floor. Squeeze the shoulder blades gently together at the bottom, then repeat. There's no need to hold any portion of this exercise. Keep moving and find a rhythm. This should be a relaxing exercise that is free of exertion and pain. Perform this exercise for about 15 repetitions and perform it twice a day. So what's the regional movement health connection here? Many times shoulder pain develops because the shoulder blade loses the ability to support the shoulder movement, which can further be complicated when the upper back and rib cage becomes stiff and immobile. As a result, the shoulders can be overworked so restoring shoulder and regional mobility and regaining shoulder blade control and support is critical if you want to unload the shoulders and allow those tense shoulder muscles to begin to relax. You might be experiencing pain and tightness in the front of the shoulders due to all that time you're, you spend sitting in front of your desk or driving or Zoom conferences or Netflix for that matter. Reaching for that keyboard and mouse in a slumped posture causes you to round your back and extend your neck. Your shoulders get pulled forward and the muscles supporting the shoulder blade become stretched out and weak. The result is that your chest, neck, and shoulders now have to compensate in order to find the support they need. They become tight, creating, great, uh, creating a great situation, great circumstances for overuse injury and pain to occur. This is going to lead to early fatigue, pain, and possibly injury with any shoulder dominant activity, such as basketball, volleyball, swimming, or weightlifting. So what you can see here is that if your shoulders or upper back become stiff and painful for no apparent reason, there's a, this is a warning light telling you to take a closer look before you begin to experience a regional loss of function. And that loss of function can lead to movement compensation and eventually leads to injury. Again, keep in mind this exercise is just one piece of a larger recovery picture. And that by itself, this is not a long-term solution for significant shoulder, ribcage, and spinal dysfunction. So if you'd like to learn more about better movement and how your shoulder is related to spine, ribcage, and even neck pain, then your first step is to make sure you have an accurate diagnosis and a clear picture of how the entire region works together so that you can begin to experience gain of function as well. Click the schedule button. Let's make sure you're not wasting your time practicing exercises that may not help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.